Would you like to hold it? I'll hold it. Okay. <laughs> so this you guys see it? This pill has a small chip inside of it with a switch. It also has what amounts to an inside-out potato battery. When really you small. swallow it, the acids in your stomach serve as the electrolyte. That's what they do. And they power it up, and the switch goes on and off. You have brought a couple of things that you're, uh, it, it, it's called... Um, the Advanced Technology and Projects Group, advanced ATAP. Te your advanced technology yep. team that, that uh, uh, Dennis hired you wisely, by the way, to do. <laughs> uh, you brought a couple of things that you're working on. And can you talk about them? Can you show them and talk sure, about them? Sure, sure. Well, you know, lots of people talk about innovation in this space as if the big innovations have already happened. I just, I think that's a lack of imagination, frankly. There are so many unsolved problems, and there are so many opportunities that can be realized by the advances in the tech here. So let's just take one really important problem, one driving application, in this case, authentication. Authentication is irritating. In fact, it's so irritating only about half the people do it, right? Despite the fact that there's a lot of information about you on your smartphone which makes you far more prone to identity theft than if you didn't otherwise have it there, right? So, so you're talking about passwords and pins and sure. the drawing patterns and uh, on well, Android? Well, sure. Look, after 40 years of advances in computation, we're still authenticating basically the same way we did years ago. In fact, it's gotten worse, because now you don't do it once a day or twice a day. The average user does it 39 times a day, and it takes them 2.3 seconds every time they do it. Power users would do it up to 100 times a day. So what are we doing about that? Well, we're thinking of a whole variety of options for how you could do better at authentication. So you can start with nearer term things like uh, tokens or fobs that might have NFC or Bluetooth embedded in them, but you can also think about a, a means of authentication that you could simply wear on your skin every day for a week at a time, say an electronic tattoo. Now, we're talking about wearables. Everybody's interested in wearables. I'm profoundly interested in wearables. <laughs> And what I, what I will tell you is that there are some, we've made a lot of advances in wearables, but there's still some fundamental problems that we haven't solved. Like one of them is the mechanical mismatch between humans and electronics, right? So electronics are boxy and rigid, humans are curvy and soft. That's a mechanical mismatch problem. Well, a researcher at the University of Illinois, his name is Dr. Rogers, what he discovered is that he could use standard CMOS techniques to make islands of high-performance silicon connected by accordion-like structures that would allow it to stretch up to 200% and still be performing. And what he did is he founded a company and they started making electronic tattoos. So I, I'm wearing one here on my arm. Can we, do we have here. a camera to get a... This is a, develop, this is a developmental system made by MC10, and it has uh, an antenna and some sensors embedded in it. And what we plan to do is work with them to advance a tattoo that could be used for authentication. Now, it may be true that 10 to 20-year-olds don't want to wear a watch on their wrist, but you can be sure that they'll be far more interested in wearing an electronic tattoo if only to piss off their parents. <laughs> right? And that can have a design, right? Because sure. they would certainly want some kind of cool design. Options, right? options. And that's something that you wear, but you could also imagine including authentication in just your daily habits. So I take a vitamin every morning. What if I could take vitamin authentication? What? Vitamin authentication. Look, I have one right here. Well, here, I'll let you hold it. Mm. Would you like to hold it? I'll hold it. OK. <laughs> so this, you guys see it? this pill has a small chip inside of it with a switch. It also has what amounts to an inside-out potato battery. When really you small. swallow it, the acids in your stomach serve as the electrolyte. That's what they do. And they power it up, and the switch goes on and off. And it creates an 18-bit ECG-like signal in your body, and essentially your entire body becomes your authentication token. Yes, this is true. Okay? Okay, but... Okay, so wait. But, but, so it's, uh, it's really true. So what this means is that that becomes my first superpower. I really want this superpower. 
It means that my arms are like wires, my hands are like alligator clips when I touch my phone, my computer, my door, my car, I'm authenticated in. First superpower, like I want that. So, so we're not shipping that right away. Yeah, no, <laughs> we're not shipping that right but, away. But it but sounds is it, like- is it, This is FDA clear? So here's the thing, this, this is not science fiction. This pill is actually made by a company called Proteus and they've developed it for medical applications. That pill has been CE stamped and cleared by the FDA. You can take 30 of those per day for the rest of your life. And then what happens? Does your heart Nothing. beat change? Does your, <laughs> we can just tell that you've you... taken the pill. I mean, the medical, appli yeah. the medical application... Does Google is... now know everything I do and everywhere I go? Because, <laughs> yeah. let's face it, Here, we, we just... like you guys, but you're from Google. Just give him some water and let him so, take that so pill. I... Right now. Thanks. Maybe, maybe Dennis. Dennis, let me ask you. Does Larry make you take one of these? <laughs> <laughs> it's optional.